Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Izzy, your host for today, brand designer from Ottawa, Canada. And we are here with the beautiful Maud Passini, brand designer, illustrator from Manu Reva Studio. Maud is origi originally from France, but is currently in Brooklyn, New York. Bonjour, Maud. Comment vas-tu? How are you? Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Ça va et toi? It's nice to be speaking French for once. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit, because our community is like mostly anglophone. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what are you going to be working on today quickly? Yeah, so I am going to be working on a branding, um, a, a rebrand for a clothing company. Um, mm -hmm. I am a brand designer, or graphic designer and illustrator. And so when I thought of what I should do today, I was like, I really want to have fun and work for a brand that I really love. So I decided to maybe like give a quick rebrand for uh, a clothing company that I think is really cool. Ooh, so designing for fashion brands is obviously so fun, but it's also a great challenge because you need to consider for like a lot of flexibility for the clothing. So I can't wait to hear about all of your tips and tricks. So hi to everyone in the chat. Let's get started. Let us know where you are tuning in from. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the new Adobe Live channel where you can stay up to date with the latest streams and participate to the Adobe Live community and obviously so much more. Uh, right now we have Kristen. Hey, Kristen. We have Oliver. We have Steve. We have Annika, who is our chat moderator. Thank you so much for being here. Can't wait to geek out with you. <laughs> so, okay. I know we have a lot to cover. <laughs> so Mode, please take the stage, like introduce yourself and <laughs> let's dive into your project. Yeah. Thank you so much. So like I said, I'm a graphic designer. I studied in France and then I moved to New York because I was really excited and attracted to the New York design scene. Um, and from there I, um, I worked at a branding studio for a few years, and then I started my own studio, which is called Manuerva Studio, like you mentioned. And we create art for brands. We create visuals that make brands come alive through all types of mediums. Uh, but like I said, a lot of uh, branding um, and illustration as well. We do brand illustrations. Um, I'm really passionate about it. My background is in uh, fine arts and I did a lot of drawing. So I felt like integrating more fine arts inspired aspects to branding can really make brands um, feel, well, make branding feel a lot more distinctive and memorable. So that's uh, a bit about our website. You can check it out on manuerastudio.com. Um, I run it with my partner, Nicolas, who's also my husband. So it's a really fun team. Um, he's the project manager and managing director. So yeah, we have really complementary skills. I handle the creative direction and he does all the project management. That is so fun. And <clears throat> so you mentioned something that you studied visual arts. Um, me too. <laughs> so I have a visual arts before doing design. So um oh. I can't wait to talk to you about this later, like later on today. <laughs> I know. Yeah, me too. Amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I'll just maybe show a couple of projects and then we can jump in or what? That's best? Absolutely. Hey, you, you take the lead. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I wanted to show like a, a recent illustration project. I designed a whole library of illustrations for a brand called Parachute. They're in the medical space. They um, help with plasma donations. They make it easy for people to donate plasma through an app. And they needed a full um, redesign of their illustration library. And uh, I didn't know at the start, but they actually had a really um, detailed and refined style in mind. So I quickly mm. learned that I would do the whole thing in Illustrator to have clean, sleek vector drawings that can be edited easily, um, but also like super detailed. And we worked on uh, a lot of uh, different faces, different body types for the characters. It was a, such a fun project. Uh, and I think it was a really, really nice way to uh, deepen my knowledge of using Illustrator for illustration projects. So couldn't recommend it more. And and then uh, I'll just show a quick branding um, project. Uh, we also, we, we did this uh, as a personal project actually, and decided to fully brand a candle company. Um, we wanted to do something that was sustainable, that was really about uh, respecting the planet uh, and that could offer <clears throat> beautiful scented 
candles um and we also had fun doing like the packagings and shooting the whole thing in our photo studio um and art directing everything and prop styling so that was a really fun project and i couldn't recommend more doing personal projects for your own pleasure <laughs> and like uh, like giving yourself the opportunity to do something that maybe you wouldn't necessarily do and maybe attract like similar clients by doing so Exactly. We have a lot of clients in the health and wellness space. So anything from actual health, uh, where with residuals, for example, or veterinary services like bond vet, uh, but also like, um, skincare or supplements. Uh, and I also like wanted to have a bit more lifestyle in my portfolio. So that's what I did with uh, those projects. That is great. Also, like the illustration project that you showed before, I just want to say that it is absolutely stunning. Uh, loving all the details from it. I'm sure that took many hours. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know about you, but I, I love like projects that require like a lot of um, focus for hours, you know, like you're in your zone and you're drawing for hours, like listening to music or a podcast. It's my favorite kind of thing to do. Mm -hmm. Me too. Sometimes I'll be designing for hours and then I'll look at my watch and I'm like, oh my gosh, is it 10 p.m. already? Did I, oh my actually, God. Did I actually eat today? <laughs> I forget. Don't forget to eat and drink though. No, don't do that. <laughs> That's, be safe. Just kidding. Um, yeah, so uh, should I go to our project or I'll follow your lead, actually? Oh, actually, please. Yes, I know everyone is excited to see what you will be working on. So the company that I chose to work with is Rudy Jude. Um, they're a very, very sustainable, beautiful, mostly handmade company based in Maine. Um, they design in Maine. Uh, they make their clothing in California um, and they ship worldwide. So they really have this connection to nature and the sea through Maine. Uh, I think the founder, Julie, lives in Maine on an island and following her life uh, online is fascinating. And I felt like I knew this brand pretty well because I follow them and I really like what they do. Uh, and so I feel like it was a good start to create my own project. So there they have a logo, uh, but in terms of their web design and type styles and graphic elements, I don't think they have a ton or it's not super uh, out there. It's not super, it doesn't stand mm -hmm. out a, a lot. So I feel like it was a good exercise. Um, so yeah, these are our, for the brand owners, but their photography is amazing. I think they have a really good eye for art directing photography and uh, mm -hmm. like conveying a story through their photos and, the, and their closing story. Uh, and lastly, they are a brand who design clothes for women, men and kids. So I love how universal and kind of unisex they are. So I kind of uh, gathered Ooh. a bit of information here. So the way, I, I, the way that I would, would usually work is that I would send a whole questionnaire to my client. And from there, I create what I call a creative brief, which has um, three different sections. So the first one is about the brand positioning, who their audience is, who their clients are, uh, what and obviously like their mission and what they do. The second one is brand considerations. So how will I translate these objectives that I highlighted in the first paragraph uh, into uh, basically the yeah the considerations of what I should be making like. Uh, if mm -hmm. their audience is some is someone who is really worried about the planet and how they consume, then the brand should reflect that by looking sustainable and all of that. And then the third part is um, what they are and what they're not. So that's kind of what the only really part of uh, that I did today because I couldn't have the founder actually fill out a questionnaire. Again, it's a personal project. I'm not, unfortunately, not working with them. Maybe in the future, who knows? Uh, yes. So yeah, I kind of came up with these adjectives myself. So. They're natural, they're from Maine, um, they are timeless and sustainable, they're super practical, um, their clothing is unisex, and they're very outdoorsy. And so then I kind of came up with um, considerations that I think should be present in the branding. So natural, so I was thinking like I should use earthy colors, and the fact they're from Maine, uh, we should have a reference to the sea, that kind of thing. So um, I also like went very... Um, like, for example, like the fact that they're practical, I was like, yeah, maybe like the logo should be a super like sturdy, strong, bold typeface to reflect that practicality. 
Um, and maybe, uh, so yeah, that informed also like the colors that I would be using. Uh, the sustainability, I think, should be expressed uh, within like the, the overall like brand system. Um, <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Don't uh, hesitate to interrupt me if uh, people have questions. Oh, no, 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 no. It's all I good. Um, <laughs> people are talking about the, the, the weather right now because in Canada, it's a big blizzard. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Is it snowing? <laughs> so it, for me, it ended. Um, but last night, it was uh, chaotic. <laughs> Oh. Oh. we had like a mix of rain and snow yesterday it was the worst like i i was completely mm. soaked yeah I feel that's like... not fun no but yeah Where this is... is like a really great research that you have done and specifically just looking at whatever is already there and there's like the website i mean there is um a few pages but not that much so this is the reading that you did through the photography and the vibe that they were giving like off that's yeah great. exactly yeah, so <clears throat> I guess like the first step was kind of looking at their logo. So their current logo is actually, I think, really nice. Um, it's probably a typeface like Sophia or it's it's a sensor that's slightly geometric uh, and really bold. And, you know, like the letters are um, a typical width. They're not super condensed or uh, compressed. Um, and it has like, it's kind of hard to say, but it has irregularities, kind of like it was remade by hand or something like that. So I couldn't use, I could have used their actual logo. I think when you do a rebrand, it's totally fine to work with some existing elements. It, it actually like helps customers um, not be confused by the rebrand mm -hmm. and like still mm -hmm. feel like they know the brand. Um, but since I didn't have access to that file anyway, I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll just like explore other things. Um, and one constraint that I gave myself for today is to only work with Adobe fonts. So okay. I went into my favorite fonts. Um, there are so many options. So I have a list of my favorites um, here and like display fonts, um, serifs and serif, all, all kinds of things. Um, and I was looking for something that felt heavy and bold um, and that had some simplicity to it. Uh, I tried a few different things uh, and I also tried some serifs. So I think uh, one of the first ones that I tried is Program. I love Degular. I think I might use it as a secondary typeface as well. Mm -hmm. um, and Degular even like in all caps is really cool. Um, I think Gopher is a really fun one. You know, like the contrast is reversed. So I think it could be good. But for, I think it looks a bit more childish and a bit more quirky. Mm -hmm. That is true. Um, Massilia is a nice one. <clears throat> and Interstate uh, is actually kind of the one that I landed on. I did a few different tries um, of weight. Uh, I think uh, the Ultra Black is the one that I went with. I outlined it and then I think I can't really... Uh, and then at some point I raised the... Um, bar of the J. I'll show you once oh, we get to okay. there. That's pretty much the only change that I made to the typeface. I also like worked on my um, tracking and kerning between the letter, uh, the letter forms. I still like tried a few different things. So I think obviously it's a really uh, convenient typeface that's on Adobe. It has so many different weights and sizes and it's really, um, it's really versatile. I love mm -hmm. Moray. It's uh, a really good one as well. I use it as a display font. And uh, yeah, so I was pretty sure of what I wanted anyway. So I went with Interstate uh, Bold, but then I decided for like the handmade and kind of rustic feel to repaint uh, it by hand, like go back and completely paint it. So uh, if you can see, I don't know if you can see my head, but I'm going to show like the actual painting that I made. We can actually zoom on on you or just have you in the full screen. So uh, there you go there. Thank you. So <laughs> I painted on like two different papers, like the actual typeface. I made it on yellow, um, yellow on white because I knew that I wanted to, I wanted the final logo to be a light color, but I couldn't do it on a dark background because it would have shown through um, kind of the opacity of the paint. Um, so I just had to then like clean it up in Photoshop, clean the edges and all of that. So Photoshop was super helpful for that. Um, so yeah, and then I changed its uh, colors on Photoshop again. I made like a blue version, um, a white version. So 
Yeah, I'll actually design some things with you guys. I'm just like kind of giving you the context. <laughs> Is that okay? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we have Annika here saying that um, she loves all the font exploration. And I think that this is so important to actually try stuff out and look at the vibe that it's giving and then go back to your research and kind of the words that you land in on you land on um, to make sure that it has that, you know, that it's telling the story that you want it to tell. Um, so this is this is great. I mean, everyone should take notes from your exploration <laughs> right now. Thank you guys. Yeah, it's really fun. And I think um, a typeface can express so much. And that's what I say to clients, like sometimes all they need is a, a type and a color refresh. Um, like, whereas that's for their logo or even like their brand typefaces. So it, like a lot of emotion can go through typefaces. Um, so yeah, like two more aspects that I kind of uh, nailed for this brand is um, I liked having like this big, thick logo on images and I, I made it yellow because I think the rest of the identity is going to have like more earthy colors and I felt like yellow kind of popped on it. And for some reason, also their photography really reminds me of um, like movie or like, yeah, like motion. Um, mm -hmm. So like on their website, have a really cool um, movie that they made, which looks a bit vintage and, and grainy and cool. So um, that was like really an inspiration. I wanted to like have that um, feel um, on the photography and I feel like having like this big, bold, yellow typeface on it made it look like movie titles for some reason. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's uh, me who can see that, but that was well, my the Do you know what I saw personally? I, I Well, first of all, yellow is not far from the complementary color of blue, right? Mm. Um, and another thing oh. that I thought is that often the stitching in jeans is like a yellowish color. Oh, that's right. Um, so it could be like kind of a, a, a detailed reminder that you have like in, in your brand that talks about like the, I mean, here we see a lot of white, but that could yeah. be something that they play with. Who knows? Yeah, thank you. That's a great idea. I was looking at this because there is a lot of stitching on their jeans specifically, and it's a light color on a dark color. So I think that's a really, really good point. Thanks for giving me more <laughs> ideas. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I thought of this. Uh, so yeah, that's an aspect. And then I think their photography really speaks for itself. Um, they have a really strong brand in that way. But mm -hmm. I was like, if we needed brand elements, I was inspired by the hand sewing aspect. So their founder, Julie, Julie often shares like her own sewing and her own craft on her Instagram. And we see a lot of like the patterns that she makes. So I was inspired to like design these little shapes that look like uh, sewing patterns. I, I myself sew a lot, so I kind of know what that looks like. And I, it was like a private joke, I guess. <laughs> with myself and other people who are sewing nerds. Um, so I made like this random shapes, you know, like that could be like a pocket um, that's like the side of a, the, the pocket for their jeans. That's like a sleeve, that kind of thing. And I kind of liked, um, you know, I thought that if we kind of used them like to spread out like that, the elements, it was starting to look a bit childish. So mm -hmm. I was like, let's like hang them all together kind of like if they're on a hanger or like in a in a sewing uh studio like hanged on the wall or whatever so that's kind of my idea I don't know if it's gonna be if everybody's gonna see it my like yeah uh but that's kind of where it started from and we'll see if we can use those um elements or if we kind of ditch them and like focus on photography uh if we use them outlined that's kind of what we're going to explore now uh we're gonna i think refine the color palette together choose the brand typefaces uh maybe create like a secondary logo or something like that or a tagline and and then hopefully create like some mock-ups for the brand does that sound good oh, wow. Yes. I'm I'm so excited. Like I love branding, like just love, love it. So I'm enjoying myself so much right now. <laughs> I like, think this is great. Like, uh, yeah. Thank you. It's really indul indulgent for us brand designers. Oh yeah. Um, and like I, uh, understanding the strategy too of another designer and why they landed there and, and what's the personal information, like uh, inspiration, like what you said, like the, the sewing pieces, like that's brilliant. 
Mm. Yeah, and I feel like for elements, I would love to hear what the chat thinks. But I feel like even if once the project, like the project is finished, once you have the branding, if if you can't necessarily reverse engineer everything and understand why each element is there, it's okay. Like it doesn't have to be completely obvious. It just mm -hmm. gives a structure and a baseline for what you're creating, basically. Absolutely. For for that, actually, I like to explain to my clients personally. I refer to the Starbucks logo. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't like know that it's the siren, like, and why is the siren like important? But it it has like become such a like big identity that we all recognize. But it's not necessarily representing coffee. Oh right? wow, yeah. Why why actually is it a siren? I should know, but I don't. So like, sorry, I said siren, but it's uh, I think I said it in French. <laughs> mermaid in, in, in the mermaid. Yeah, it's I nine. didn't notice. <laughs> oh my gosh, brain fart. I'm so sorry, everyone. I didn't even uh, notice. That's crazy. Uh, sometimes it does like uh, trick tricks like that when you're like fully bilingual. But anywho, uh, yeah, it's the mermaid. And I think it's to represent that back then they would have to go overseas to get the coffee. So it was like a long uh, a trip over like on water and uh, the, the, the the marine like would hear like the the like mermaids sing so it, it's it's to symbolize that i'm sure there's a deeper explanation to it and i'm going like very much like on top of it and not like a deep dive but um like whenever a client is not sure about that and like they're asking for examples like that's my go-to example for for that specific scenario yeah thank you so much for giving that idea it's i think a really good symbol i didn't know and i i really love that idea now and I think it makes a lot of sense once you explain it, like it's so mm -hmm. poetic and much more interesting than the, if they had a coffee cup as a logo, which I think like a lot of clients would naturally kind of want to represent their brand in their logo. And it can be a bit too like, yeah, straightforward. It's the thing is like the logo is an identifier right it's it's meant to identify but not necessarily uh, like support the whole business. That's why you have a brand identity. Um, so whenever <laughs> you kind of dissect it and make them understand that there is always a teaching component whenever we're like in, in our line of work, right? Like mm -hmm. um, design has like a lot of uh, like facets to it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we have one comment uh, here from uh, Timia saying such a pretty yellow Ah, like, thank love, you. love the yellow. <laughs> See, yeah, I think I I know her. I'm really nice, really nice of you to comment. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. And uh, then we have Rick saying sirens in Greek mythology are creatures half bird and half women <laughs> who lured sailors to uh, destruction by the sweetness of their song. So there you go. Yeah, so I guess exactly. there's like multiple meanings to uh, mermaids and sirens. Oh, so interesting. So yeah, and I think it's something that my design teachers taught me is that when you're a designer, like don't go inspired by go 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 and get don't go and get inspiration in other design. Go and get inspiration in history, art, mythology. Like those things will really enrich your process. So good mm -hmm. good on you for knowing that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, great. Yeah, so you guys keep the questions coming, and I'll I'll try to design <laughs> at the same time. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do for the brand thesis. So I think we'll choose together. I also wanted to mention that I have a um, I have a freebie that you guys can grab. I think they're probably going to share the link for that. Um, I, I put together a few like different uh, color combinations that kind of uh, in, <clears throat> that I was inspired to create with this project, but it's not necessarily like what I'm going to use on this specific project. <clears throat> Sorry. And also uh, some type combinations. And obviously the possibilities are endless. And for here, I'm using only Adobe fonts. So we have Degular, Moray, Roboto Light, and Roboto Mono, which is uh, one of my favorites. Um, yeah, all these guys. So this yeah, is the... so good. This <laughs> is so fun. Thank you so much. Uh, Annika just added the link in the chat. So there you go, everyone. Like, go ahead and download that file. Um, such a great tool for to get inspiration. Yeah, I think when you're stuck sometimes, like uh, even for me, like I'll probably be happy to look at that and think back on like what typefaces I like and what, yeah, the kind of thing mm -hmm. that I like. 
Um, so I really was into this combo right here at first because um, I like the elegance of uh, this uh, serif typeface, but it's not too, it's like, um, it's a bit condensed, so it feels a bit more refined. Uh, the serifs are pretty soft and rounded, which I like, and it feels really modern. But then I would balance it with like a mono typeface for the subtitles, uh, which I think speaks to the roughness of their um, mm -hmm. of their clothing and their work. Uh, I think a simple sans serif could be good for the for the body copy. Um, but yeah, and then I think when we kind of do mockups of posters and stuff, I'll see if I prefer using Degler as the as the title typeface. Uh, and yeah, in terms of color, I would love to hear what people think, but I think this color palette, I like um, the, these colors, like the green and the gold are really inspired by earth, obviously by nature, <clears throat> the blue, the light blue is for the sea and, and the sky of Maine and California. Mm -hmm. This is for the denim because they do a lot of denim and then they often have like this coral color for some of their shirts. Uh, something to note is that they only hand dye everything, so it has to be colors wow. that come from nature. That's a really good big point as well. So I like this color palette, but I think it might be a bit too colorful for a brand that still needs to be quite elevated. Um, and so maybe like we could reduce it to only these colors. So the gold represents the earth and the light blue represents the sea. And then we just have our highlight. I don't know. What do you think? Do you want to do a poll? Because we can do a poll. Yeah, go ahead. One okay, or so, two for the color so palette. So can you zoom in on the two um, yeah, perfect color palette? So the one on the left is uh, A, and then one on the right is B. And if you can go and write it, actually A and B for, to help people, mm -hmm. then we'll get a poll uh, like set up for you. Or you can also just like add it in the chat, everyone. Um, which one do you prefer for us to work with? <laughs> Thank you. So in the meantime, I'll just look at their Instagram while you guys. And it's crazy because it's we're already 30 minutes into the stream. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I need yeah. to speed up so we can do some mockups. <laughs> um, yeah, let's do some mockups. Um, yeah, so I think I'll start with posters. It's what I prefer doing. So I love this series of photos. Um, I think it was from their summer collection. Mm. Um, and like it's there's a lot of green. It goes very well with the yellow. And I set up my um, my mockups this way. So I have a layer for the background and a layer for the design. So um, so it's super convenient. Uh, I don't need to worry about the backgrounds. This, I don't know what that is. And yeah, I can just work directly in my mockups on Illustrator. I think sometimes it's better than like switching to Photoshop all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I actually do everything in Illustrator. There's so much that you can do, even with images. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever you, you bring your images, like do you do, do you just bring them and then uh, do a clipping mask or do you um, do like the place in in place or i don't know how it's called what do you mean like uh for like when, mock up images yeah or like just like putting it in place because sometimes what i do i'll like make a shape and then there's that little circle and um square right underneath your your colors like on the left hand side and if you click on that um you can actually do like i think it's draw in shape but if you do a if you place an image in there, it also works. Um, are you talking about like that, the mask here? Mm -mm, but it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm confused. Hey, I was it's all good. Out, like my layers and I, I got, anyways, I don't know why this. I don't think I'm doing it in the conventional way either. So. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, what if we do this multiply? I don't know why it's not, well, Sorry, I'll just move this to the background. I i don't know what's going on with my layers. It's uh, okay. I lost this guy. Uh, okay, I know what's happening. 
It's okay. There's yeah, we'll a lot do of that for now. And then if I have, yeah. So I think this should be bigger. So I think when I do like a series of three posters, I like to um, to do like one that's photo based, one that's just like vector based, so colors, graphic elements, this kind of thing, and and on another one that's photo based but with a different photo. So let's mm. see um, if we can bring in some elements like those and then maybe like when people have voted on the colors i'll see if i um kind of tune the color down here well it seems that a is the winner okay so more colors more colors people are i'm i guess we're like creatives that are watching right now so we like a lot of colors <laughs> yeah exactly and Annika is saying draw inside. Yes, th that's exactly what I meant. So you can, with the draw inside function, you can have a shape and draw directly in it. And like your, whatever you're drawing, like won't bleed because it's basically you're drawing inside the shape. Oh my God. Also, I, yeah. How'd you do that? Sorry, I don't know this. Um, so, no, okay. So go and pick like whichever uh, shape that you want. You, actually, we, we can do it with your next poster. Okay, so if, yeah, and if you go to the right hand side, like you see like that, um, like your colors where you have like your fill and, and your stroke. My swatch swatches. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But on the on the left. Yeah. Here. here. Uh, if you if you look underneath, there's like actually that square and little circle draw drawing modes. Perfect. Oh, yeah. But you need to for the draw inside, you need to make sure that the shape is selected. Perfect. So oh, yeah. see how it's like selected like that. So you can actually place an image directly into your shape or you can bring in the brush or whatsoever and you can draw and it. It won't like bleed like over your oh, shape. Yeah, that's going to stay perfect. inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've, I've used that before, but I, I completely forgot about it. That's so good. Thank you for sharing. I'll remember it now because I usually like what I do is that I, um, I do my design. So for example, I would do that um, and then copy the shape, paste it in place and do a mask. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you can change your shape and stuff, but you have like, you've just like added a shape, which is not always the most convenient. I think you can move both of them because I can still move my elements when I do the draw inside. So I think mm -hmm. that both like functions yeah. work really well. It's like, it depends on how, like, what are your, <laughs> yeah. and your if ways. I, and if you have like a, a shortcut, I think that's something I could get used to really quick and like be mm -hmm. super fast. So um, what else could we do as a poster? So we've already like done the classic like photo plus uh, logo thing. Uh, I was thinking maybe we could use these elements on a photo. Or we could do like a, a tagline. Oh, a tagline is a good idea too. I love those shapes like so much. Like they elevate oh, the brand. You. So like it's it, it works really, really well. Thanks. I really wasn't sure about them. So I really appreciate I was like, is anybody going to understand? Um... Oh, that so I love doing you know like the view um what is it when you do command y I only know the, um, the shortcut but when you uh tr no not preview preview yeah mm -hmm. basically it's so helpful to like see all your elements so like for example like these guys I know that they're behind my photo so um I'll bring them up with my um, shortcut to arrange, bring to front. And that's so helpful. Mm. And so let's oh, see. Oh, that's really pretty. And we could do <clears throat> the logo below it and bring it up. Yeah, sometimes like simplicity is best. Um, so yeah, we could do that. And let's try and see if we could do like a bigger tagline maybe. Yeah, let's maybe a little big. We'll go back to the normal one. Um, in the middle is fine here. 
I think, I think maybe this could be green and this blue. And then I think adding transparency to my um, shapes makes it a mm. bit more interesting. So I'll do 90%. So it's still like super subtle. And same like with my logo, I gave it, I think, 90% opacity because like I said, it, it's uh, made by hand. You can't really see the strokes here and stuff because it's a bit too small. But um, adding like this 90% opacity um, kind of mimics like the painting when it's not fully opaque, I feel like. Mm -hmm. so that was the idea here. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we could do like the website homepage. So what I want on my homepage is, um, I think something that could be interesting is, uh, remind, uh, potential customers that we do, um, clothes for both men and women, even maybe kids if we can. Um, so I'll probably like, try to have either a photo or, um, or a tagline that says both. So I'll import images that I grabbed from their website, um, brand images. Mm -hmm. um, so they call that above the fold, whenever it's like the first thing that you see b before you start um, like scrolling. So yes, you want to have your most important information above the fold because people don't scroll anymore. <laughs> so you oh, need really? to make sure, yeah, you need to make sure that you grab their attention. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, that's so true. For them to fold. Like if you don't grab their attention at first, then they don't scroll. That's essentially like the... Yeah. Yeah, the trick. Um, and maybe we can have her next. And I love doing mockups on Illustrator. Um, obviously, if I do actual web design, I would do it in Adobe XD or Figma. Um, but just for here, like it's so nice to, like you said, like having your mockups in all in here. So, and I mean, in you're somewhat building a presentation right now too, right? So it's already yeah. in one place, and you can easily edit if needed. You don't need to go in between like all like different. Um, software which is good yeah exactly um you know what i'm going to add my color palette uh, to my swatches so it's much easier for me to grab any color that i want um loving that you're using global colors too this is great <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> okay let's do that so I just want to say a few uh, like hello in the chat because we have some new people that that joined us. So we have Elisandra. Hi, Elisandra. Thank you so much for coming in. We have Rick. We have Jasmine. We have Sean. Uh, we have Esther. Um, we have Arlene. Uh, it's so good to see you here. And thank you so much for designing with us. Yeah, thank you guys for joining. That's so nice. Um. I think they don't uh, sort their clothing between men and women. So I'm not going to do like one side is men, one side is women. I'll do like for everyone or something like that. And mm. it kind of like the text, uh, having the text in the middle of two photos kind of links them together. Um, for now, I can do yellow text. Maybe I'll add like a layer of um, slightly something slightly darker. So. The text is a bit more visible. I'll do multiply and then like an opacity of, let's try 50%, maybe a bit too much. And then I'll bring my um, text back to the front. Mm. Yeah, sure. crisper that way. And obviously you want a CTA um, above the fold, like you said. I think for CTA, we can use uh, Roboto Mono. The type is, I think, is very like functional. Mm -hmm. Um. So CTA for people who are new to that lingo, it means call to action. Yep, a button or something like that. Um, and let's work on the on the menu. So I'll do, I'll grab the black version of my logo. 
Uh, here it's a PNG because I painted it, uh, but I would also have like a, a vector version to give the client for when it's uh, when it's not convenient to have a PNG. Um, Absolutely. You know what I started doing? <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't give JPEGs to my clients anymore, so they don't get confused. Oh, have, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I would. I mean, they don't they ask for it? No, because I, I in my brand style guide at the end, I have a lexicon and in there I explain what each file that I'm giving them means and where it should be used. And then mm -hmm. there's like a big like note for JPEG because it has a white background that it just should use PNG instead. So that's really <laughs> smart. I love that. Yeah. Giving everyone all my tricks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. How, what do you give like at the end of the project to your clients? Like a you deliver your assets and then like a guide to on how to use them? I give a lot. Uh, I give yeah all the assets, which would include illustration, icons. Uh, I give all the fonts too, some images that um, like maybe was in the style guide. There's the style guide, or I call it the brand, um, the brand guidelines because mm -hmm. there is the brand strategy in there as well. <laughs> And I also do a quick video that I attach like to, uh, like I link it in my style guide. That is me explaining the style guide. Like, so if they do need more information, it's just like, Hey, this could be good for here. Like it's if they're more, there's more idea. And if their team also grow, it's kind of a crash course to the style guide. Mm -hmm. Um, what else do I give? Um, and like as as far as uh, file extension, it's everything like SVG, everything uh, except JPEG. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like as long as you have these, that it's perfect. Like you don't need. Mm -hmm. Like most likely they will use the PNG like most of the time. Yeah, yeah. EPS really confuses. That's why I was asking like, don't they ask for the JPEG? Because people are so confused by um, <laughs> by EPS. They're like, I can't open it. Um, but it is it yeah is so quite helpful i also separate my logos for digital use and um uh, print use so mm -hmm. it's it's already like separated um so the eps and uh, ai will be in the print folder and then the d digital is like the svg the png um there's also the ai there if they need to kind of scale it for other stuff or um but um i actually have an extension uh, for Illustrator, it's called Logo Package, and it uh -huh. exports everything for me in like two minutes, which is amazing. Oh, it's called Logo Package. I knew it yes. existed, but I couldn't remember the. And is it like because I love like to prepare my artboards and like do everything properly? Is it um, uh, like personalized enough, like custom that uh, for you or? Yes, it does, it's not constrained. The new version, because they just released a new one, uh, it um, like you can even have like I, I did all my icons added there as like one export, which was okay. amazing. Yeah, that's so nice. Mm -hmm. It is awesome. Uh, we have Alexander asking a question here. Where did you get the fonts uh, of the font pairs? So you mentioned earlier it was just Adobe fonts. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, all Adobe fonts. You'll find them very easily. Um, and they're free if, with your Adobe subscription. They're the best. Mm -hmm. And it's like some combination is in your freebie as well. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll just have to go activate them on Adobe. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to do like a product page to see how like the typefaces all come together. This is a good idea to have the like a mono uh, typeface for the price. It's clear. Yeah, I've, again, like all the um, uh, like functional elements, like the CTA and mm -hmm. stuff. I think it's nice to use the same CTA font. 
Yes, diapers. Um, they say too that uh, to make sure that your visitor, your website visitor, really understands like how your. I think this is probably a UX thing, mm -hmm. um, but to have all your links the same color, only your like all your links the same color, all your buttons the same color. They should not be uh, like your links and buttons should not be the same mm -hmm. color. Like to make sure that they understand. Yeah, like, what it point. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why it, it's going to be tricky if I made this yellow and it has to be yellow on everything. Um, yeah, maybe sometimes it could be black. We'll see. Because like if it's if it's a button here on this uh, cream background, yellow is not going to show. So maybe. Uh, well, well this that. could be a maybe. Yeah, this is a button because then your buttons would have like that. Um, yeah. Like if, outline. I guess, like, if they're mm -hmm. all like that. Mm hmm. So for anyone who's joining, I'm um, rebranding a brand that I really like. Uh, they didn't ask me to do it, but I thought that they're really cool and they could be, yeah, it would be a fun opportunity to see how we could make them stand out even more through branding and like show how it can really rely on very simple elements like tight faces and colors just to really express your brand's personality. Love it. So good. We are all mesmerized by how you're working right now. <laughs> <clears throat> Is uh, some um, like e-commerce um projects is that something that you do often uh i wish i did more of them but i have uh, i'm working on one right now actually for a product um so i'm really excited to get more experience with shopify and all of that uh i've done it for yeah for a few projects uh, i did it for a kids brand um a few years ago um they are here and nice. i did it was yeah i did everything on figma and then their developer developed everything custom it was really cool and I think it taught me a lot about yeah e-commerce do you do a lot of that no uh I I try to stay to I mean branding but then uh if if it goes to that I do work with a developer to help out so I would just design like the wireframes and then yeah someone else I, I guess like you but not that much e-commerce um to mm -hmm. be honest yeah, a lot of my clients are service-based businesses, so I don't do e-commerce all the time. Um, and the quantity that we want. Nice. I love how you're thinking about every little detail just for this mock-up too. <laughs> so um, this is not your first time here. Uh, this is your no. se second time. Yeah. Uh, last time you were on Adobe Live, it was very, very different because <laughs> you were in person <laughs> pre-pandemic. Yeah, I was. Um, I loved it. I was hosted by the ladies from Weekend Creative, um, Ellie and Arabella. And that's how I met them. And now I really follow all their work. They're really, really amazing. Yeah. And yeah, it was so much fun. Um, I designed a calendar for my brand. I yeah, I offer, I designed like a few months for a monthly calendar that I would post um, each month, which I'm gonna try and do this year again. Um, mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to it's think. Not good. Um, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was like much more of a personal project. Like this is more um, branding, obviously. My colors became really uh, bright. That's why I got a bit confused. I think my computer does that sometimes because sometimes I have a display mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just my laptop. So if I, it's usually happens when I, um, when I import an image from <clears throat> a different website, then mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I brought it back. Um, should we do Instagram stories for like ads and we'll use their beautiful photos? Yes. 
Instagram and TikTok is where everything is at right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't, to be completely honest, I don't think I have designed a lot of things for TikTok yet. Have you? Not TikTok, but a lot of uh, campaigns for Instagram and yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot yeah. of stuff for events. I do a lot of events. Oh, right. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Uh, I am on TikTok, but I don't use it. Same. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I only like watch people do stuff. It's um, it's, it's tough to do it all. I know, right? Like I'm, I'm overwhelmed with Instagram anyway, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what should we do for, you know, like the their IG profile? I think we could do like the R, just the, the R on the color. Let's see how that looks. I like it. <clears throat> Something that I, I like to use as well um, on Illustrator to check, like edit colors on photos is adjust color balance. I shouldn't really do it here because I want my blues to be consistent, but just for the sake of this, um, I'll try to just like brighten my blue a bit. Just so it pops on the gold mm. just a tiny bit more. I was actually going to ask, I'm like, would that be a legibility issue? Because it was like yeah. uh, a little dark. Yeah, so I think it would be in that case, like it's just an Instagram profile picture. But yeah, in general, colors should really contrast. Mm -hmm. And you were on top of it. I didn't even have to ask. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Experience. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then we'll do like a tagline, I guess, on the photo. Um, what should we do? Oh, I like, I actually like this combination a lot. It's funny because the only time, mm -hmm. not the only time, but often, like I don't use centered text. Like I hate it with a passion. <laughs> mm, I know. I have the same. Like, yeah. But in stories, it's sometimes you like, that's the only thing that works. <laughs> yeah. I find honestly, like stories to be a really difficult format to work with because um, mm -hmm. it's so long and, and narrow. So it depends. Um, yeah, That's I think it. centered could work. There, there's also like, yeah, like left centered can, can work as well, but uh, left align, sorry. Um, left align, yes, yeah. But it also depends on the, the words that you're using. Like sometimes if it's like, you kind of don't want to create a ski slope either. Like, ooh, it's like, yeah, like exactly. <laughs> a ski slope. <laughs> I know there's a proper term for that, but like I should probably pick up a typography book to refresh on the terminology. <laughs> we <laughs> called it uh, in French, like a flag. Um, but I think like the flag re uh, references, like when it's good, you know, when it, like each line is a slightly different mm -hmm. um, length and like in a, in a way that looks fluid and so uh, in, in your previous stream, uh, which was in 2019, you mm -hmm. mentioned that you're inspired from a lot of art and artists. Uh, you had mentioned Metzis, uh, Gustav Klimt, uh, amongst others. Do you still uh, get inspired by them today? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Klimt is a good one, um, I think. I go, I try to go to exhibitions uh, often and I was in Paris for the holidays and I saw a really great exhibition um, that kind of um, uh, put side by side Monet and Joan Mitchell. And it was Ooh. really interesting because they actually have a lot of similarities. So obviously Joan Mitchell was a um, an American um, painter and like seemingly has nothing to do with Monet, but actually 
a lot of their colors were actually like a lot of this. I think that's how I know that why I, ha I had this yellow in my head because they do use uh, a lot of, of this super bright, uh, yeah, uh, bright yellow in their work. So yeah, Mona and uh, Mitchell, I think I didn't know that well Mitchell's work and I really love it now. So that's something I'm really good. I want to see. Yeah, definitely a big inspiration. I love it when <laughs> you make those connections. You're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I saw that. Like, oh, that's been, it's because of that. Like, it's so important for creatives to sometimes like step outside of what we know um, and not just look at maybe design if you're a designer or videos if you're a videographer, because inspiration literally comes from everywhere. Um, and for sure. Mo mode is like the perfect example for that. Um, even mm -hmm. again, like for like the cutout pieces for, for sewing, I, I've been burning to ask you this question during this whole stream, but is the vest that you have on something that you made? Yeah. How did you guess? <laughs> well, because you said like all the like cutout pieces, uh, um... like earlier. And then I, I've noticed the pattern and I'm like, that's probably like, that looks very unique. So it's probably handmade. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah I made it. It's my... <laughs> It's really my hobby to relax and create. Like, it's so nice. I know, I'm sure, like, as a designer, you know how, like, freeing it feels to be creating something. Um, mm -hmm. And, but, like, in a way that's not tied to work. So that's what I do now. I, yep. I, I sew a lot. And I actually found this. It's a vintage uh, quilt that I found in, in when I was in Canada uh, a year ago. That is so cool. I'm going to try and do like a handwritten tagline for this one with my brush. That is also something that um, you should check out on modes like previous stream uh, after this one. <laughs> um, like uh, your handwriting is so special. Um, like for, for the calendar that you built, uh, there was a lot of like hand drawn yeah, stuff and right. it was very organic and beautiful. Um, Thank you. I just recently did a handwritten logo for a client. Uh, it was so, so satisfying. I hadn't done that in a while and I was so uh, excited. And that one I did fully on Illustrator because I liked the um, kind of the fluidity that it can give you. Um, here I'm just like retouching the one I, that I just made because um, I don't know, like if my computer is lagging a bit, but the strokes weren't super clean. Mm -hmm. But uh, another one that I did, um, a handwritten logo is that one I'll show you in a minute. And I, um, for that one, I actually uh, wrote on paper and yeah, this one. And I did like thousands of tries, obviously, and I ended up with this one. And so you can see some of the texture, like the really handmade marker texture. Yeah. And it was really fun. And I think for this brand, for Rudy Joe, the one that I'm working on right now, um, there's a lot of uh, handmade elements, components to their brand. I'm not exactly sure like if they fully make everything by hand. I, I don't think so, but it's still like, it feels like a very personal brand. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure like at some point they made things by hand. So I felt like having some handmade elements also could be a good way to reference that. Absolutely. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, so, I mean, time flies by like, like crazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> like in, in the Adobe sphere, uh, we have 20 minutes left okay. like, to this stream. And I also want to mention that if you want to recommend yourself or even someone else to be a guest on Adobe Live, you can now do so. You can hit that tab in the right corner of the uh, of the chat and you can like submit as many people as you want. So I have no idea how you just did that. That was just like, done. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it's not completely perfect, but I don't want to spend too much time refining it. But something that I find really helpful with the Illustrator brush is that I do, um, I chose obviously my brush and then I either do like a full accurate fidelity or the middle mm -hmm. one here. 
and it's really helpful to um if you want to have like slightly more rough handmade mm -hmm. things you, you do like the fully accurate and i love it too sometimes it, it feels really interesting um and that one like does a lot less anchor points when you do uh mm -hmm. smoother so it's easier to retouch uh like i'm doing here so we have arlene saying love this so loving this whole project thank you i love the word radically in general <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's a like good one. it's it is a good one I feel like people stop to listen when you mention that word <laughs> that's very true uh, but this is actually a question that I ask like during the questionnaire phase of for with my clients I'll ask like how are you different then they will say I'm like okay how are you radically different mm. usually it's like a different answer and we try to focus on the radically different in, instead of just the kind of overall differences. Nah, yeah, that's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. And sorry, I totally interrupted. You were going to say something. Me? I think so. You were going to, or maybe, <laughs> may, maybe you were going to mention what you were going to do. Yeah, just like working on a third Instagram story. Nothing too important um arlene is uh, also adding the hand lettering is such a nice touch it definitely captures the handmade and like hand dyed um, feel of the brand thanks <clears throat> so question for the chat actually um if you wanted to do a rebrand for a company like if it was like your dream client who would it be let us know we are curious yeah i feel like i i would love to try starbucks because <laughs> we talked oh, what about would you it do? Like, what would you do do you have I ideas know. no I, at all i think that would be just a great challenge because it, it is such yeah. a like known brand yeah, um Maybe I would introduce like a new mascot, like instead of having the mermaid, having some like something else. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's like a, a ship captain or something like that would still relate to the story. And uh, maybe the captain has its own drink or maybe it's a campaign more so than a rebrand. <laughs> yeah, actually a campaign could be fun too. Then you make the, the mermaid and the captain fall in love or something. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. Apologies for like the cheesiness. <laughs> <laughs> this is a total like little mermaid story here. Yeah, true. Let's do business this is... cards. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say it's shaping up really nicely. Thank you. Um, I think we can export all of that as like a pdf at the end or something so we can like review everything i think it will be more satisfying than kind of watching like the mess here mm -hmm. um i like how business cards sometimes can just be like a color and type uh no photo and no graphic elements and it, it you can like really see if the spirit the the essence of your brand is still expressed and that's something that i like to try how many pages usually are your um presentation and style guides oh that's a good question so presentations uh usually for the first round um you know like full like creative direction exploration they haven't seen anything yet uh I'll do two or three directions so that's usually like a 50 pages presentation um wow. that's a rough estimate and um and we have yeah like all of those all of these things that I, I did here so like pages and pages of just like exploration, playing with photos and type and color and type. Um, and and then we go to mockups and obviously like the type um, pages, the color pages, this kind of thing. Um, yeah, how about you? Is it, are they long presentations? Yeah, maybe not 50 <laughs> pages, but definitely like in the 30, 40 like mark. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm actually thinking of uh, revisiting my process uh, because right now what I do is I offer two logo with one visual identity. So I make sure that the logo works with um, like the full visual identity, but I'm wondering if I should just propose the logo at first and then let the logo vibe dictate instead of having two logos that is similar. Um, I don't know. And I don't know if I explained this properly. <laughs> say, that a lot. say that again. Why are your logos similar? So because I attach the same visual identity to it. So whenever oh, I, pre okay. I present like two logos, like they are similar. I mean, yeah. And then it's a lot of mock-ups to, to do with the two logos and the same visual identity because you have to repeat everything twice so that they fully see um, how it works. So I'm wondering if I can ease up my process by just proposing the logo at first with like the color palette and then um, after that creating like the rest of the visual identity and presenting that as like a second secondary proposal, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm still not sure about how that would work. I would need to think about it and maybe on the next stream, I'll be like, I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess you could try and maybe also you could like do something different for different uh, clients because not mm -hmm. every project is the same. It's the same. Yeah. And um, I totally see what you mean. Like I, I always do the full um, brand identity for each logo direction and I do like something different and stuff. Uh, but it can be frustrating because you're spending a lot of time on a direction that might not get picked. And sometimes, thing. yeah. And like sometimes they'll only pick it uh, according to the logo that it's, that's attached to it. So you could have just like presented your logo and be done with it. I don't know. But yeah, I, I do like to to show it in context still. So yeah, you let me know if you do it and what it looks like. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> and if you, yeah, if you, if you like it. Personally, I've been toying with the idea of doing um, a one direction approach instead of showing several directions. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. That was my next question to you. If you only pre present one or like two like purple, like ideas or three. <laughs> yeah, I do two or three um, and I, I've done more two so far because we're still a small studio, but we've, we're getting bigger and we we will have more resources to do three directions. So I'm I'm excited to see what that looks like and if it helps. Um, you know, like I think like, maybe, maybe the duality sometimes it's confusing to clients and maybe like having a third completely different direction kind of is safer too. So yeah, yes. not sure. Or like going like fully different um direction and doing only one and i know that the, the designers who do it really swear by it so mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's why i'm like i'm also thinking about just proposing one when maybe add a, one revision to that like instead of having two you have three so there's still that you know flexibility for the client um mm -hmm. And, and at the same time, like I personally do a lot of brand strategy before. So there's a lot of answers that's yeah. already there. Um, yeah, exactly. Some, sometimes it eliminates like the the exploration process. You don't have to do it. Um, because again, right, like the brand identity should reflect like the purpose, the mission, the vision, um, like the onlyness of the business and stuff like that. So. Yeah, if you've done your background research well, usually you're good once it comes to designing. Mm -hmm. Were you going to say something? Oh, no, I was just going to say, um, I think it's always better to design with purpose than just for trends and something that's nice. Yeah, true. Are we still using business cards these days? Like I barely see them anymore. Good question. <laughs> Very good question. It's funny. I used to do um, business cards with a QR code for one of my clients and I did it for years before COVID. And then 
And I was like, I wasn't sure that they like anybody actually used QR codes. Sorry, yeah, did I mention I did yeah business cards with QR codes? Yes. And um, and yeah, I wasn't sure that it was useful, but now I feel like people use them a lot more. So I think oh yes. Um, or you know sometimes I have I don't have it now. Uh, but I used to have like a digital business cards that I uh, had on my phone. And because I was like, yeah, like business cards are really pretty, but I'm not sure it's super helpful for people to have. Um, and you could have a digital digital one with just a QR code on it. That is true. I know, I know <laughs> I've heard stories where uh, some people would go into conferences and just have a big QR code on their back. And, and it would be like, I dare you to scan it like underneath, like that was the call to action and it would lead to their website. I think that's uh, brilliant. That's brilliant. Brilliant. The brilliant. Marketing person came up with this deserves that's a raise. <laughs> chef, chef kiss. Um, we have a uh, Sila saying, love the rebrand mode. You're fast as lightning. Also props for being able to multitask while doing a whole rebrand. Absolutely. This is hard to do. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Annika saying, I use a digital one with the QR code as well. Mm. And Arlene is saying, that's exactly what I was thinking too. She's so fast. So Speedy Gonzalez over here. <laughs> Thank you. Um... So we have about like 11 minutes before we do a wrap up. Yeah, okay. And I guess like in five minutes, I'll export my PDF so we can look at it together. For sure. You can gauge um, as long as we have time to uh, look at everything that you have done and uh, know where we can find you. Oh my, we have Claddy in the house. Hello, Claddy, how are you? <laughs> Claddy is a legend on Adobe Live. Oh, really? What does she do? Oh, Sorry, yes. I, I should know. I mean, the question would be, what does Claddy doesn't do? No. <laughs> Claddy has been a speaker at Adobe Max. Uh, she has her show, um, like amazing designer. Uh, she has the Print My Soul um, studio as well. So Claddy does it all. Cool. I'll check her work. This color palette was definitely the right choice. It's coming up to life like so well. Thank you. And I love coral. That's like a personal choice. I love coral on anything. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I think like a, a warm color like that or a pink or a red can really, it, yeah, really gives balance to the brand usually. Like it really offers um, warmth and uh, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's really helpful it really works well with the the, the jean color too uh Claudia is saying love this color palette so. thank you and i love how you're working with the mask uh, personally, that's not like a uh, like something that I do in Illustrator, mm -hmm. um, but that's like like that's your thing. That's what you also did mostly for your your other stream. Yeah. So you always do the draw inside feature. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's so funny, and I also like it's something that I try to be aware of, like keep learning. <laughs> So I will definitely use that mask thing and that um, draw on site. But yeah, it's uh, it's nice when they have like new features and um, you can like find new techniques. Oh my gosh, that intertwine new feature. Thank you, Adobe, for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
So would that be a dream project for you to do a rebrand for a, a clothing brand? Yeah, I, I've worked with fashion brands in the past, um, but I don't think I've really fully rebranded one. I, I branded a few kids clothing companies, mm -hmm. but like something that is like that, like super sustainable, like with incredible ethics, um, like that puts a lot of emphasis on doing things properly with natural um, mm -hmm. components and stuff is, yeah, quite a, a dream project for me. So we'll see if... Um, maybe I can try and yeah like contact them and do stuff for them in the future and you know like sometimes um you'll you can start working with a client just like on super small things and then it can evolve to a bigger project Growth. so I think mm -hmm. uh, it's also worth um starting with small stuff so I'll just export that yeah I was just gonna say like for for rebrands um like it's I think they're they're great and it can also show a lot of like creativity if you have that in your portfolio um <laughs> if you do send it to the company that uh you like that you have done that um I would be like rereading my email like seven million times to make sure that I'm not offending <laughs> <laughs> oh my god of course <laughs> yeah I never I really don't take it uh like I'm, I'm not saying that it, they anything is wrong uh I think you know I'm just a nerd and I want to do these kind of things and also um I I don't I can, I've never done that as a disclaimer I I never do work before I get a client I don't think working for free is gonna benefit anyone uh in this case like I just wanted to do it as a personal project I I yeah, I think like as a junior designer, like you don't need to create something before you go and see a client for them to work with you. Um, yeah, just wanted to mention that. I think a good way to approach it would be like, hey, I love your brand so much, uh, so much that I I uh, wanted to see what I could do with, with, with it. Um, I designed this and I'm really proud of it. I wanted to show you as a courtesy. Um, and that would be exactly. the, you're not like, you know, being a, a, offending like anyone and you're not being mean about it. You're just like, and it's exactly how you presented it at the beginning. So hmm. everyone follow modes uh, example. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we'll, we'll have a PDF very soon. I guess it is a, a heavy file. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking like it's really hard for me to I, I always realize like my illustrator files because I import so many photos and elements done by hand on Photoshop and whatever. They're like 300 uh, megabytes. And I don't know how I oh my gosh, I should really I should really tune, tune it down. Um, yeah, also, let's take a look. Yeah, I would, I would say save your file too. <laughs> that one? Have... No. It, it's going to make my computer explode. So I'll oh, save okay. it after that. Okay. After, I, I mean, I don't want to take the risk that it, it's going to be frozen. Okay. For okay. So let's just walk, uh, watch this. So yeah, I like the contrast of the light color on the earthy background. Uh, it could also like be the yellow on any, on any color. Um, I thought it was fun to use these guys. Uh, I wasn't sure about these colors. I think are pretty bright. Um, at first, but I think we can tone it down and only use like photos and one color on some applications. Uh, here's a good example of how to tone it down color wise. I think, um, yeah, I tried a few different typefaces. We have like a few of my color explorations here, then typefaces. So obviously like this is a very mess messy version of what a, a client presentation lo would look like. You would have all these pages uh, cleaned up and uh, like some more posters, poster options. Uh, you would have like a page like that with the color references. Um, again, like color combinations uh, with type. I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. I'm loving um, the transparency of your elements. Like that was a really good idea to add in. Like it, it gives a lot of depth to your design. Thanks. Yeah, I think it's a simple ad that can be quite fun. I also want to, with the, that logo, I think we can work with spacing out some elements. Uh, so that's why I did that here. It could be a, a monogram as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when 
on some applications where they don't have space to use the full logo, you just do RJ and the hang yeah, I'm tag. I'm thinking of like a, t a tag, like inside like the, like a shirt or a jean or something like the RJ could be mm -hmm. like that, yeah, that for would sure. work really well. And yeah, I think something that was fun is like working with a logo that's kind of similar with that, what they currently have, but with like some added details just so I could have fun and, and all of that. So yeah. And it gives more flexibility to the brand to to have like more assets than than none really. Yeah, exactly. Um, and like as we were saying at the very beginning of the conversation, for a fashion brand, you'll have different collections, um, and that can evolve, and that and they'll have a different art direction for each. So, like for one season, they'll want to be like can tone it back and like not use all the colors. And then for summer, because like that uh, coral is usually used in their summer collections, and same as the blue. Um, yeah, you you want to be able to have like flexible items, and that's what I always say. Like a flexible system to work with mm -hmm. on all your different media is really helpful. And like that's not just applicable for fashion brands. That's like for any brands really True. that you know um because they can have like sublines or like a new product that comes out um so you I mean <laughs> always think ahead sometimes for your client as well yeah totally <laughs> mm -hmm. that is amazing so like in in your presentation you always make sure to have um like like the photography and everything is that is there something that you have not worked on today that you usually add to your presentation um i'll do a summary at the end of the two different directions that i did or two or three so uh logo logos compared um, on the same page uh, so that the client can really compare and sometimes a second page where i compare the graphic elements of the two directions so that's something that would be there um and I would also show the logo on black, uh, black on white. And mm. I try to do, um, usually like my logos work at either scale and size, but if it's a logo that can get a bit like smudged when it gets smaller, then I'll also show it small and like maybe make some adjustment if it needs to be small. So yeah, like just like black and white as well can be really important. And that's something you don't have in your color palette right now. Um, do you? True allow to have black and white in all of your brands like to, to add it to that or like do you make specific choices sometimes that you don't have black and white sometimes i don't have it if it's if i haven't needed uh needed in the project but here i think i would have it because all my text was black and i even used like a cream color for the website's background That's true. so i think cream should be also on the color palette yeah mm -hmm. that's a good point that is great. We have Rick saying wonderful stream. Thank you very, very much. Have a, have a great day. Have a great day back to you, Rick. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. So, um, I mean, we are wrapping up this stream mode. It's it has been like a wonderful, uh, like time to have you like loved the, the direction of this brand, uh, make sure everyone to download, uh, modes asset. And Mode, where can we find you? Yeah, so please come say hello on Instagram. Um, my profile is manirva.studio. Uh, you'll, I'll try to, I try to update it every week. Yeah. Like three, three, four times a week. Um, we can chat there and my personal Instagram is Mode Passini. Um, I don't post as much design there, but I post a lot of sewing. <laughs> if that's something that you're inspired by. So yeah, find us there. And then our website is manureva.com. That is or amazing. Studio. That way. is amazing um do you have like one project that you'd like to show us like just as kind of a way to say i can do this <laughs> uh oh my god so many choices uh oh, i yeah, did that that so i try to do um regularly like some art and like something fun for myself uh that can sometimes can be used in projects sometimes does not and this i was trying a, a marbling technique it's really fascinating so Ooh. you only like have to dip your paper in the water that you prepared with paint um and that gives like the most incredible graphics so i'm gonna try i used it actually um in the january calendar that i uh put out uh, at the beginning of the month 
Um, and I'm going to try and do a different painting technique each month. So I really have to figure out what I'm going to do for February because <laughs> it's coming up. That is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to try this thing. Yeah, I you should. Want to try this. So yeah. everyone, uh, Mode's account and website has been added to the chat. Make sure to hit that follow button. And uh, this is the end of our show. Thank you so much for being with us, uh, geeking out with us, and uh, join the next show, Design Fix with Claddy, who was here today from Print My Soul. Learn how to create a series of images that will complement your brand advertisement. So perfect pairing to this stream. So thank you again, everyone, and see you soon. Thanks.